All right, so welcome to this, the fifth episode of uh, Olas Dev Academy 5, where we're going to look into how to modify the trader agent code. Um, just starting with a disclaimer, this is organized, this session is organized by Valerie uh, in order to educate people about OLAS and developing autonomous services. Valerie is one of the core contributors to the OLAS ecosystem and all the content that we provide here is merely an expression of our view and does not constitute financial advice. Uh, so quick introduction to myself, I'm Oak, I'm co-founder and CPO at Valerie and a DAO founding member, uh, founding member of the OLAS DAO. Uh, previously, I was an early contributor to Balancer, Ceramic, and ThorChain. And before crypto, I uh, worked a decade in product in Web2 startups. Uh, the mission of uh, our mission is really to enable groups to co own AI agent systems, beginning with decentralized autonomous agents. So, with all that out of the way, um, focusing on the session today. So as I said, we're gonna be modifying and learning about modifying the trader agent. I'm super excited about this one. Um, just a quick recap of what we've learned so far. Uh, initially, we started out learning about what OLAS is, why we're building this thing, and uh, why get uh, involved with developing for the OLAS ecosystem. Um, we also learned how to run an agent and then and most recently, we learned the structure of open autonomy, which is the framework for developing services powered by autonomous agents. Today, as I say, we're going to combine a bunch of the, the knowledge that we've gained so far. We'll go deep into the internals of the trader agent, which we learned to run. Uh, the trader agent, of course, was built with open autonomy. So you will now be well positioned to read and kind of understand what's going on there. Um, and once we've gone into the internals, then we'll actually see how to make modifications to the agent ourselves. So as I say, really looking forward to this one. Uh, today we have both Jose and Adamantios on the call, both uh, some of our amazing engineers at, uh, at Valerie who have um, built a lot of autonomous services themselves. Um, and so with that, I will hand over to Jose uh, to take away the presentation. Thank you, Oak. So, uh, okay, here's my um, slide again. So I'm a cryptography engineer at Valerie. So I, uh, I've been involved in um, building uh, some of the services that are part of this uh, hackathon. I have been also involved in uh, part of the uh, framework and uh, also in other uh, tasks related uh, to other services and and so on and um and yes and my background is basically as uh, i mentioned on previous uh, uh, sessions it's on uh, cryptography security and so on so we also have here as oak mentioned um Adam Anchos. so unfortunately i don't have a slide in the presentation but i prepare this image so Adam Anchos, if you want to introduce uh, yourself sure uh Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Alamadius. Uh, you can call me Manos, which is easier. Um, I have a master in artificial intelligence. In the past, I have applied machine learning in life sciences. And for the last two years, I have been with Valerie. And I have contributed in building uh, the Open Autonomy Score and various services, uh, such as the Trader, which we're going to talk about today. Great. Thank you. So uh, first, uh, this is the agenda for today. So we will just uh, recall uh, re uh, what we did on the last session. Then we will examine the trader agent architecture. Uh, we will talk about uh, trading strategies. And finally, we'll have some uh, lab session, like uh, helping you to uh, examine where things take takes place in the source code. So again, as uh, Oak uh, highlighted at the beginning, the aim of these sessions is not to cover every single low-level detail on the services that we are exposing here. It's rather to give you an overview so that you have the tools and the confidence to explore the source code 
understand what's going on and how to uh, find the places where you need to modify uh, whenever you want to make some change. So just as a refresher of uh, what we did on last session, so we um, explored again the definition of the service, uh, of what, what was an uh, autonomous service. Uh, we discussed how autonomous services uh, are defined using FSNs, with, using the Open Autonomy Framework. We examined the main components that uh, made these FSMs, these finite state machines, uh, what types of rounds, depending on the consensus, if we require like um, that all agents agree on a value or they or we allow that agents provide different values on, on each uh, state of the finite state machine. And we also examine how to um, write, sorry, or how to uh, pass parameters to a service, to the different components, uh, how uh, we we need to um, code this so that we can read this from the behavior or and from the rounds. We also took a look at the synchronized synchronized state, which is, which is let's say the shared state across all the agents uh, forming a service. And we also examined some other boilerplate code like the agent configuration file, the service configuration file, and and so on. The business logic of agents must be deterministic, in the sense that any local computations that uh, do agents uh, cannot be the result of uh, local randomness, local time, etc. Because uh, if we do this, then it will be impossible to reach a consensus among uh, the different ag agents that uh, form the service. Uh, also, another important uh, note is that inter interactions with external world, like uh, connections to HTTP, uh, to a ledger, to a blockchain, etc., have to be done using the provided components by the framework, uh, which is HTTP connection, ledger connection, and so on. So it is important to remember these uh, two concepts. So this is the structure of the of the service. So we discussed that in an um, FSM app. So we um, design the the business logic of the service as an FSM. So this is what it's executed on the on the agent, and each operator uh, has uh, two parts executing on the uh, infrastructure, which is the agent and the consensus gadget node. And again, the consensus layer is transparent for the programmer. This is done automatically by the framework. So we also need uh, um, an agent service uh, safe in case this service is executing the transactions on a given blockchain. So this will represent the transactions. So uh, one important concept that uh, we need to understand before building more complex services, like is the case of the trader um, agent, is the concept of a composition of FSNs. So the composition is uh, a key part of the frame framework that allows the reuse of uh, different finite state machines that uh, provide different functionalities and aggregate them into a service. So. Uh, for example, imagine I have here these, uh, FS these three FSMs that are, I, I can uh, develop them independently, and each of them uh, execute a different functionality. So, for example, one of them may be in charge of executing uh, the placement of uh, transactions on chain. Another one might be uh, in charge of executing some sort of um, complex interaction with, uh, I don't know, with uh, the subgraph or something like collecting information. And uh, I want to aggregate these functionalities, which are uh, separate, but I want to combine them into a single uh, finite state machine that has uh, this um, set of, uh, function of functionalities. So how this works in the framework, um, it is, uh, I mean, it is important to understand how this works in the framework because the complex services make use usage of this and the and the trader uh, i will uh, we will show you how the trader does makes use of this of, of this um so each finite state machine has uh defined a set of start states uh, i don't know if you can read here it's for example this one in in, in green which means that uh it can receive uh, external transitions meaning that uh, I can compose another. Um, I can compose this finite state machine by entering in this state here. So I can receive uh, transitions from a previous finite state machine. 
So this is what is known as uh, start states. So a final state machine or FSM map, it, it also has uh, what we call the final states, which essentially is the connectors that go out to the uh, start states of other finite state machines. So for example, in this example here, so we have a finite state machine, it has three final states, and each one of them, uh, I want to compose the functionality at this point with the start states of other finite state machines. So in this case, I am connect making this connection. So meaning that when I'm in this final state here, I will transit to the finite state machine, uh, to this final state machine, entering into this uh, start state here. And uh, the same for this state here and the same for this state here. So in total, I am combining three finite state machines. So the output of this composition will be these uh, finite state machines that, that I have here. So it will be a single finite state machine. And uh, what will happen here is that uh, whenever I have um, one this event that originally trans transited to this finite state here, it will uh, transit to this state here, which is of finite state machine two, to this state uh, A2 here, okay? So final states uh, doesn't do any functionality. So uh, let's say the code for final states uh, must be always empty. This is the case because uh, final states are, let's say, placeholder that we can use uh, to um, to compose to other finite state machines. So if uh, we examine when we examine the code of the of the trader or or, or some other um, FSM app, you will notice that the code that we have on final states uh, is empty. We do we do nothing. So this is because when we compose, the final states uh, will be uh, removed. They are simply placeholder to indicate that this finite state machine can transit to another finite state machines. So this is uh, the important uh, part to understand on how composition works. And of course, I need to define uh, these relationships, uh, which um, I will show you later how this is done in the code. Okay, so just uh, making a, a a recap on how this trader agent uh, works. So remember, we have uh, the Omen markets uh, that they are being open periodically. So trading agent monitors these markets and uh, uses uh, the AI uh, Mech, which is another decentralized, uh, another autonomous service, uh, to request for prediction. So the AMEX execute this uh, um, AI task, like makes this prediction and produces an output that the trading agent digest and decide decides if it's going to place a, a prediction or uh, sorry a bet or not for a given market so if we take a look at the finite state machine of the trading agent uh, you can um, possibly you cannot get to read everything here but uh, i mean it's a little bit scary if you look at this <laughs> finite uh, state machine so this is the output of composing the uh several finite state machines that i will uh, comment now uh i mean don't worry because i'm not going to detail uh all these uh steps here all these states and transitions because this will be uh, you know we can take a lot of time in discussing everything here so what are the finite state machines that make up the um, the trader uh, finite state machine so we have these uh, five uh, here, which are, let's say, uh, that uh, come with the framework, which are uh, for general purpose, you can use in any any service because they provide general functionality. And then we need um, finite state machines that are designed specifically for this service. And we combine all of them into a single big finite state machine. So, and the general uh, finite state machines that we have is the registration, which simply uh, it's a it's it's a stage where agent um, manifest their willingness to participate in the service. The reset and pause ABCI, which is simply a finite state machine that resets the the consensus layer and waits a bit before continuing uh, the the business logic of the service, the cycle of the service. The transaction settlement, which is in charge of placing the transactions of change. So this is a quite complex finite state machine. 
Uh, the transaction settlement multiplexer, which works together with uh, this previous one to, uh, to help the service understand where a transaction came from and where it has to transit after it has settled, the, settled this transaction on chain. And finally, we have another one, determination ABCI, which uh, I will not uh, detail now. And uh, finite state machines that need to be done particular to this service is the, the decision uh, maker, ABCI, which is the main uh, finite state machine where all the, um, the process, uh, the, the bed placement and so on takes place, uh, the make requests and so on. Market manager, which uh, takes uh, care of, um, let's say, updating the the the, mar the markets on Omen, reading the, on the Omen uh, database through the graph and so on, and updating what are the existing markets. The staking ABCI, which is for um, for executing staking operation. I will not cover this today. And finally, the trader ABCI, which is the composed FSM. So the trader ABCI is a finite state machine that aggregates all these FSMs here. So this is uh, the same finite state machine as I show you here, but I am just grouping the, uh, let's say, some uh, uh, finite state machines into a, a box so that we don't distract on what the service is doing. And you can see that this is a much more simplified uh, version uh, without all the states. Um, so I, maybe it's a bit difficult to read. Um, we can share the slides afterwards, of course. But this box here is essentially a transaction settlement finite state machine, which is in charge of uh, placing the transaction and ensuring that the transaction has been um, taken uh, and has been finally approved and integrated into the uh, blockchain and, and so on. So this is the reset and pause. So the finite state machine usually works, goes until this this uh, point here, and then it loops back again here uh, in this arrow here. Um, I'm going now to detail what are the most uh, important points associated to the trader um, in this finite state machine. So I have this, uh, so let me see, because I have in another slide here. Yeah, I have in this slide the information here, but, uh, I will be using this uh, to guide you on how this is working. So the first um, the first state is update bets run, where it collects information from uh, the Omen markets. The next state, when this is finished, is the sampling round, where the, it reads the list and, uh, of updated bets and select the ones that satisfy a, a specific criterion. So, Currently, what it is uh, considering are the markets with highest liquidity. So once uh, it has decided in which market, it goes to the next state, which is tool selection round. Uh, in this uh, in this state, what is happening is um, the the finance and the sorry the service is kind of maintaining a list of what are the best tools from the MEC to send a prediction request and it's uh, selecting this tool according to some greedy algorithm. Once it has decided uh, what algorithm in this state, in this state here, it places the, the MEC request for a prediction, okay? And if you notice here, this, uh, this state here, it transits to this uh, transaction settlement because it needs to execute um, uh, it needs to place this uh, transaction on chain. So once it has finished placing this transaction, so it's uh, a bit uh, disorganized because this tool is uh, placing uh, the state not in order. It's a bit difficult to to put this uh, planner graph in a nice um, view the, so, so that the lines don't cross and so on. So the next state after placing this uh, request is uh, if you read here number five is decision receive round so this is when i receive the the prediction from the mac and i decide what uh, betting strategy i'm going to place so this is what uh, manos will be taking uh, talking afterwards about the the betting strategies so once uh, this is finished i'm going to the bet placement round which is simply sending the transaction on chain 
And next, uh, the redeem round for markets that uh, I have won. And calling the checkpoint, which has, which has to do with uh, staking, which I will not be discussing this in this uh, presentation today. So here you have a summary. So as I said, we will uh, we will send you the, uh, the slides so that you can uh, kind of examine this uh, in uh, at, uh, when whenever you have time to take a look at this. So, but essentially, what uh, I mean, it's just following this diagram. So this is the information that I just covered on the previous slide. So. Uh, in this state here, the decision received. So as I mentioned, uh, the service receives the prediction request from the MEC. And if it's uh, profitable, it moves to the bet uh, placement round. It also executes the bet strategy. So what is this about the bet strategy? So uh, the service is designed so that it allows for different bet strategies. Uh, so, and this is uh, extensible. So we can add different bet strategies as a plugin, let's say. And um, you can configure the service so that it executes one bet strategy or another. So let me go into detail what I mean by bet strategy. So, uh, so to illustrate this with an example, so uh, a simple default strategy is to place a bet based on the confidence of the prediction that the MEC has returned. So when the MEC uh, returns a response for a prediction, it gives you uh, the probability that the event is true. So it gives you, okay, I believe this event is going to happen with uh, this probability. And it gives you a confidence of the prediction. So which, um, which is uh, also a value between zero and one. So zero is not confident and one is uh, confident, it's 100% confident. So the default strategy, uh, it simply consists on placing a bet according to the confidence level that the MEC has in this uh, prediction. So if uh, the MEC is very confident, so I can, I can um, afford the risk of placing a higher bet, if the MEC is not as confident, so maybe I don't. I decide not to bet on that on that market. So this is uh, so this is the simple strategy based on MEC confidence. So we also have on the code uh, base a more powerful uh, betting strategy, which is known as the Kelly criteri criterion. So the Kelly uh, criterion is uh, a well-known betting strategy so there are some theory behind it so you can reach the the wikipedia link uh, to get more information about how this works uh, so i'm not an expert on on how this formula is derived and so on but essentially what it is is uh, we provide uh, some information to this uh, algorithm and it outputs how much we should bet on that market so the information that um, this algorithm requires is uh, what is the, the the amount that we have available to invest what are the odds of receiving receiving on the bet so meaning if it's uh, two to one uh, meaning that i will receive twice uh, as much as i as i uh, have a bet for this market and so on um what is the probability of success and probability of failure of uh, placing uh, this bet so with all this information uh we let's say plug all this information into the formula and it outputs how much uh, should we bet on that market or if we should not bet to that market but again this is uh, kind of a, of a theory uh, but we treat it as a i mean we can view it as a black box that i give this information and it gives me the output on what uh, should uh, we bet for that market Okay, so the thing here is that the information that we need to uh, provide to this black box, which is the Kelly criterion formula, uh, we can extract this information from the output of the MEC and from the uh, Omen markets on what is the status of the market uh, currently. Okay, so um, just uh, before, um, switching to adamantios which uh, the scope of the of the lab in this presentation will be to show you how 
um, how to create a new strategy for the trading agent. Just wanted to show to show you something about uh, finite state machine um, composition. So let me share my IDE. So if we go to Raver, um, this is the trader repository. If we go to packages, uh, Valerie skills. So this is the main skill here, the trader ABCI, where the composition with the remaining ABCI uh, apps or finite state machine apps uh, takes place. We have a file called composition.py, and here we can We can see how I am chaining the different uh, FSM apps, as I commented in the presentation. Um, let me see, agent registration, decision maker, market manager, the transaction submission, and so on. So um, it's kind of very simple code, code to understand. So we need to uh, first define what are the different um, ABC, sorry, the different FSM apps that we want to uh, chain and we need to provide a transition mapping. So the transition mapping essentially is uh, is a mapping that says, okay, when I'm rich on this uh, state here on this round, I need to move to this round here. So what it is doing, it is. Let me go back one moment. It's defining these big arrows here on how I need to transit from one state to another one. It's just a mapping, uh, like a, a finite state machine, similar to a finite state machine uh, transition mapping. So I just wanted to show this. And for the, uh, the other part I wanted to show you is about the strategies, but Adamantios will uh, go into detail on this. So in order to find where this takes place, we need to go to um, decision maker sorry yes decision maker it's on behaviors decision received so this is the where i have received the output uh, from the neck so remember that all the behaviors is the place where i execute the agent sorry the action itself you need to have this uh, async act method here. And here, if we go into the code at some point, I will have this uh, function get bet amount. And here at some point, following the function call, uh, yeah, I have here the strategy uh, selection and the execution of the strategy here. So the different strategies are stored in the, if you go to the trader, I have a folder which is called strategies. Here I have the simple strategy I mentioned, bet amount per threshold. And the other one is the Kelly criterion strategy, which uh, applies uh, this uh, formula to place an optimal betting strategy. So, um, Adamantios, I think we can now switch to your screen and your focus, um, as I mentioned. So you will be presenting on uh, what is needed to create a, a new strategy and possibly um, a bit more of um, work through the code I just showed on where this is when where this uh, strategy is is called. Hello, everyone. Um... Let me share my screen. Looking for the window. Okay. Sharing now. Um, so I guess you can see uh, my screen now. And uh, I have the trader repo open here. Um, as Jose mentioned, if, we, if you navigate to the packages and go to the Valerie packages, go to the skills, um, we have the decision maker ABCI. And this FSM has defined some behaviors. And one of the, of the behaviors is the decision received. Um, 
this behavior is responsible for uh, searching on chain uh, for the uh, response to the request that we have sent to the Mac um, and getting uh, these three uh, fields, uh, which is the, the vote. Uh, so if we if the Mac believes that we should vote for yes or no, um, the probability uh, of the vote and the confidence. Um, now, using these three fields, uh, we uh, we pass them in the is profitable uh, method that Jose mentioned, um, and the is profitable method uh, after uh, calling uh, the strategy, uh, it should have uh, the bet amount available, and the meta the bet amount is used in order to decide whether. Uh, whether uh, the, the vote is uh, taking this position is going to be profitable and whether we should uh, proceed and uh, uh, place the bet, uh, perform the transaction to place the bet. Uh, now let's focus on the uh, strategy. Um, so the get bet amount method is responsible uh, to uh, dynamically load uh, strategies. Um, so in order to understand what this means, uh, maybe it would be better to uh, start from the configuration. And let me search for this. Um, OK, so as you can see in, in the configuration, uh, we have what is called trading strategy. And we simply need to add uh, the name of a strategy here. We will see what this means later. We also have this parameter says use fallback strategy. This is basically uh, if the trading strategy that we selected fails, then uh, we continue and try uh, a different one. So if this one returns zero or something that is not profitable, then we use the fallback strategy if the flag is set to true. Um, so let's see what the strategy name is. Um, in the file has uh, to strategies JSON configuration, um, there is uh, a mapping. And this is uh, a has. And we will uh, explain how uh, this is generated. And here is the, the strategy's name. So when you want to create a strategy, you need to uh, have a name for it, obviously, and uh, a file uh, that specifies the strategy. And after uh, you finish writing your code for the strategy, uh, you can post it on IPFS. Uh, we have developed uh, a tool to do that. Uh, it's the Mac client. So after you use this tool and push your strategy to the IPFS, you will uh, get a hash uh, for this. And this is how you can create the configuration uh, for dynamically loading uh, a strategy uh, to the Mac. Um, we also have this configuration. This is the last one. Uh, it's called uh, strategies keyword arguments. And here you can, uh, it also has uh, the form of a mapping. Uh, you can specify. Uh, some extra uh, parameters uh, to be passed to, to your uh, strategy. Um, so here, for example, for the Kelly strategy, we have the uh, bet Kelly fraction, and uh, you can pass any value uh, you want for this to, uh, uh, to override it. Um, so why do we load the strategies dynamically? We do this because otherwise, uh, someone who wants to uh, develop a new strategy would have to edit the uh, VFSM itself, um, which uh, would require uh, um, a, a longer procedure and uh, would also uh, need to mint uh, the FSM to mint this component uh, uh, again every time that it changes. Um, so instead, uh, what we do is uh, we have 
there's a folder if you if you open the the trade repository there's a folder it's called strategies and here uh, you can specify some strategies uh, which will be dynamically loaded uh, so let's take a look at the bet amount per threshold, which is the, the simplest strategy. Uh, how you can specify it, you, you just need uh, an, init, an, init, uh, an init file. Um, a simple configuration, uh, a component of YAML file. Uh, among others, uh, it must include uh, the entry point, which is uh, the name of the file that uh, is the entry point and a callable. Uh, this is a uh, function. So the callable uh, is the function that uh, has to be specified always uh, inside your strategy. And this is what will be called uh, by the, by the, the FSM. Um, so if we take a look at the run method of the, this simple strategy, um, we see that uh, it simply uh, does the following. Uh, it accepts a confidence uh, from the Mac tool and uh, a mapping, uh, which is the bet amount that should be placed based on the threshold. So what it does is it calculates the threshold uh, from the confidence and then simply uh, gets the, the amount of the bet it should place uh, using the threshold that you've calculated and the mapping that has been passed as an input. Um, and then it it just returns uh, this. Uh, so now going back to the FSM, uh, what this profitable method does is, uh, sorry, what the, the get bet amount uh, does is uh, it first of all downloads all the available strategies uh, which have been specified uh, here. So based on the hashes, it downloads the strategies. And after it downloads the strategies, uh, it, it simply uh, loops uh, until the bet amount is not zero if if we have enabled uh, the the fallback uh, strategy and otherwise it only enters once here um, and uh, here it calls uh, the strategy that it has dynamically loaded so um, in order to for someone to to generate a strategy they simply need to uh, create uh, a package uh, like these ones here. Um, and, uh, and then update the configuration uh, on the uh, service.yaml file. So back to you, Jose. Hi, th uh, thanks, Adamantios. Um... Let me share. So, uh, so yeah, I think we have reached uh, the end of the presentation today. So, uh, there's some exercise we propose you, uh, which is essentially what uh, Adamantios uh, commented, which is um, reviewing um, how the betting uh, strategy works. Uh, the source code that we have just uh, presenting, understanding uh, it, uh, and uh, try to tune up some uh, parameters of existing strategies uh, through the configuration files. And uh, finally, write your own custom strategy. It could be like, for example, a very simple strategy, like always bet yes on a market, or if you want to go to something more complex, uh, you can uh, also do it. So the main takeaway is that the logic for placing this uh, strategy is uh, somehow self-contained on this uh, uh, strat uh, on this strategies folder. So you will have so the the, the code is designed so that uh, it's extensible in that sense. So you will have the code of this of your strategy contained in in one place, and it doesn't have to interfere with the rest of the logic of the trading agent. So, uh, 
I think that's uh, everything on our side. So we are happy to take any any question if you have. Uh, as ever, the Discord is open for anybody who you know after the call does have questions, either you know uh, somebody on the on the call listening in or um, somebody watching the recording in hindsight. So. Um, yeah, in that case, I just wanted to say thanks to all of you for for turning up and uh, and and listening in and taking the time to do so, and also to Jose and Manos for the very clear presentations. Um, yeah, thank you all, and uh, next session is on Friday, so see you then.